Hi guys, today I'm talking with Dr. Neil Paulven. He's a world leading anti-aging expert. This one's all about rapamycin, which has been getting a lot of hype in the industry. People like P.T. Atiyah and uh, Ben Greenfield, they've all been taking it. I'll be doing an update video on rapamycin as my true age test results, they're about to come out any day now. And since my last test, I've now incorporated rapamycin. So I'm very keen to find out what difference it's made, especially to my pace of aging, as that uh, can pick up changes very quickly. Because you could argue with rapamycin is re really well understood. I mean, if it's inhibiting mTOR and an mTOR is, you know, it's like really well understood, you know, like a decrease in the expression of mTOR is definitely associated with longevity. So it's kind of, you think that there's, there must be, you know, the animal studies would kind of transfer into humans. Yeah, I mean, that part is, but I get, that's part of it. Also, you mentioned a couple other things that, Again, if it's working on the immune system, it's going to hopefully do something with senescent cells. So it's it's hitting multiple hallmarks of aging, which I mentioned before, which is not just so um, it, it's anti-inflammatory. So it does all those different things that are going to help promote an anti-aging environment. So mm -hmm. as potential, the thing is, this is one of those ones that's kind of the opposite of some of the other things I mentioned where... My analogy to people, this is the kind of Ferrari right now that's being driven by a 17-year-old. It's very powerful. We just don't know exactly, again, sometimes it may go a little bit off course here and go a little bit out of control, and then we can kind of fine-tune it. But we don't know the right exact dose. Do you cycle it? Do you do it once? Do you take it? I mean, do people, some people will do it for 10, 12 weeks, and then we'll stop for 10 to 12 weeks and go back on it. Some people do it continuously. What's the right dose? And we don't know that yet. I mean, I just actually, right before we filmed this, there was an article, actually an article, it was a post on social media showing what all the top longevity people dose it at, and they're all over the place. It's not really? consistent. So again, if the top experts dose it differently, then it's hard to explain to a patient exactly how to mm -hmm. dose it. I mean, there's a kind of a ballpark now where we kind of start with a sweet spot, but it's, it's, it's again, in a year or two, we'll know a lot more and have hopefully a lot more mutual agreement on what the dosing should be. Um, but it definitely has huge potential in a lot of different facets of anti-aging and longevity and just general health. Because mm. I understand, yeah, the typical dose is what, like five, six milligrams, something like that a yeah. week? That's the, like six to nine is the sweet spot for most people right now, once a week. Um, and then it's not, there are some people who push it, which I don't really agree with that i haven't seen much of a benefit by pushing the dose and since we don't know for sure yet the side effects that I, I don't love it but there are people who really push the dose yeah because definitely sounds like something you know in at the right dose it has benefits but no if you do too much of it it's going to have the opposite effect and then so yeah exactly so it, it's again it's one of those ones that again the, i think the next two or four years are going to be really exciting in the anti-aging longevity health space because mm. a lot of these studies are either being funded by the drug companies or now with the source of crowdfunding and all the the uh they call it dci like the decentralized funding of studies either from crypto or other investors i mean it's enabled us to do so many more studies than we could before where it's not just traditional grants and which slowed the, our development completely which is horrible yeah and would you say uh, have you seen many of the studies where they've combined rapamycin with metformin or acarbos yeah so i mean we know the only one that worked together synergistically was acarbos metformin didn't do anything um so yeah acarbos is much more has is actually again i kind of uses like i said a top 10 or top 15 list acarbos has just more data behind it now than anti-aging supplement um a study just came out i think it was yesterday that uh, another anti-aging company gave patients metformin and their aging biomarkers didn't move compared to acrobos and other uh, anti-aging or synolytics so I, i'm having less and less faith in metformin as a true anti it's, it's good and it was great and it's also incredibly inexpensive compared to the other ones i mean it's great because it's diabetic medication so we know that, again, the link between sugar and all that. It's also great, but for one's great because it boosts what's called AMPK, which is an energy booster. Um, so that people think that has some anti-aging benefits, definitely anti-inflammatory. So it has some benefit, but the, there's really not been a good anti, again, you're up mentioning data. There's not made much great anti-aging data at all on metformin. Acrobos does. 
To get rapamycin prescribed, check out Live Forever Health with my discount code TEM10 for 10% off.